Hi everyone! Welcome to our first video on video lessons. What we're going to do today is we're going to go through our ladder method as a refresher. So remember the way we set it up is we start with our base in the center. Desi, Senti, Millie to the right. To the left we have Deca, Hecta, and Kilo. Now the way to think about this remember is you've got a decimal point here at your base. Anything to the right of the decimal is smaller than 1. Anything to the left is bigger than 1. Okay? So you start in your middle. You've got everything to the left of the base. The base is our decimal point. Everything to the left of the base is bigger than 1. Everything to the right of the base is smaller than 1. So our deci is like saying 0.1, centi is like saying 0.01, and milli is like saying 0.001. Good way to remember it. Milli is like millennium. Millennium is a thousand years, right? Centi is like century. A century is a hundred years. And deci is like the des part of decimal. Remember, we always use tens. So we have deci or deca, they both mean 10, okay? Centi means a hundred and milli means 1,000, okay? So the other way to put this is 1 over 10, 1 over 100, or 1 over 1,000, okay? So on the left-hand side, Deca is the same as saying we have 10 times our base, okay? Hecta is the same as saying we have 100 times our base. And with Kilo, it's the same as saying we have 1,000 times our base, okay? Another way to remember it is that there are 10 decimeters in 1 meter. 10 deci in 1 base, okay? So here we have this all laid out. Now let's say that we need to do a conversion. We want to use the ladder method. The ladder method is the easiest method because you're just jumping from rung to rung. All you do is you count the number of rungs and that's how many places that you move the decimal. So real quick, let's get that started. So let's say that you have something like 1,300,000 and 21,000, 000, zero, 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 and we're doing this as milli, milliliters. Now remember, your base is your grams. Your base is your liters. Your base is your meters. And e even sometimes your um, Seconds. Very rarely will it be the seconds, but even sometimes it can be the seconds. Okay? So this is where we start out. This is our unit without a prefix at all. So no prefix whatsoever. That's our unit. That's where we start. So we're starting with milliliters. So we're starting down here. Okay? We want to convert to meters. Okay? Meters are bigger than millimeters, so since we've got way too many zeros here, Going that way, we should be making our number itself smaller, even though we're not changing the item that we're measuring. So when we go here, we need to go from milli to base. First thing we do, we need to go from milli to centi. So we jump once. From centi to deci, we jump twice. From deci to base, we jump three times. Okay? So what that means is that we need to move our decimal point, which remember, when you have a number without a decimal point, it's implied that the decimal is at the end. So if you see 131, one, you know that there's a decimal at the end, even though we don't say it. So we need to take this decimal point, we need to jump it three times. Okay? So now we have 1,000. 321 meters, or oh, I'm sorry, not meters, this should be liters. My apologies. So now we have 1,321 liters. That's still a pretty big number, right? So now what we want to do is we want to take our liters, we want to come over here to kilo. 
So now all we have to do is we jump once to deca, once to hecta, once to kilo. So there's three more jumps. So we take that implied decimal point, move it one, move it two, move it three. So now we have 1.321 kiloliters. Okay? So let's try a different one. What if we have a very small number and we want to make it a little bit more manageable by changing the units that we're working in? So let's erase all of this. Okay. So say that we have 0 0.0000011. This is a uh, lot of zeros, right? And this is going to be in, let's say, kilometers. Okay. So that's a lot of zeros. We don't want that many zeros. We want to have a nice simple number like 111, right? So let's take this and let's move it all the way to the right to milli. Okay? We want to go all the way from kilometers to millimeters. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on the left. We take one jump from kilo to hecta. We take a second jump from hecta to deca. We jump then to our base for a third jump. We jump from our base to deci, from deci to centi, from centi to milli. So now all we have to do is we have to go through and we need to count each jump. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six jumps. We have six jumps. So what we need to do is since we're moving from left to right on our ladder, we need to move our decimal point from left to right. So we move it one, two, three, four, five, six. So now we have 0 0.111 millimeters. It's still a decimal, but it's a much more manageable decimal than all those zeros. Okay? So let's try another one that may be a little bit more confusing for you. So let's say that we start out with 139 centimeters. Okay? Now remember, we have our implied decimal point at the 9, after the 9. So we want to take the centimeters, let's turn it into deca. Now the abbreviation for deca is DA. Okay? That helps us distinguish between deca and deci, since they both start with D. So, we want to go from our centimeters to deca. So we start one jump to deci, one jump to the base. From the base, we do one jump to deca. So how many places do we move our decimal point? We've got one, two, three. And since we were moving from the right-hand side, of our chart to the left hand side, we're going to move our decimal place from the right to the left. So we go one, two, three. So now we have 0 0.139 decameters. So that's V A M. All right, so hopefully that's helped you a little bit with understanding how to convert from the different units in metric. This is all that we're going to expect from you on the test, on the uh, physical science test. For those of you in chemistry classes, make sure that you turn into the next video. We're going to go through how to do dimensional analysis. Hi, chemistry students. Welcome to a little reminder, refresher course on dimensional analysis. So you may recall me talking about this either as dimensional analysis, or you may have heard me call it parenthetical conversion. What we're going to do is we're going to start out with our information. So you start out with, in this case, 1.79 pounds. We want to convert it to grams. The first thing you need to do is you need to determine what your conversion factors are. So you've got your conversion factors. Remember, these are the ratios that we build that we can just plug directly into our dimensional analysis. So what we're going to start out with is we're going to start out with pounds. We need pounds to go into metric. 
So we want to take our pounds and change them into kilograms because that's a conversion factor we actually have. So we know that one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. Okay? So remember, we can write this two different ways. We can write it either as one kilogram over 2.2 lbs, or we could write it as 2.2 lbs over 1 kilogram. These aren't actual division. Remember, these are not actually dividing anything. They are just telling us that this is the ratio. You have 1 kilogram to 2.2 pounds, or you have 2.2 pounds to 1 kilogram. That's all it is. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our known. So in this case, our known is what we're starting with always. It's also known as a given. So let's take our known, which is our given, which is our 1.79 pounds, and let's put it here just so we can remember. When we get into the moles unit, this may be a little bit more confusing for you to figure out what exactly is your given. That's why we're going to practice writing it now, so that in the future, when you do these problems, it'll be much easier for you. So now we've got our known and our given. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this and we're going to start our conversion. So if we start with our known, so we've got a 1.79 LBS, okay? What we want to do is we want to draw big parentheses and put a bar in it, okay? And remember that your pounds is over 1, okay? You divide something by 1, nothing happens, right? So any number that you have, you can always remember that it's on the top, and the way it's on the top is you're always dividing by 1. So this first parenthesis, what we want to do is we want to put in uh, our first conversion factor. Now remember, if something's on the top, it is um, always, when something's on the top, it is canceled out by what we put on the bottom. So as of right now, our pounds are on the top, so we want pounds to be on the bottom here. So let's take uh, the one of these that has pounds on the bottom, which would be 1 kilogram to 2.2 pounds. So let's just move that on down. So all you have to do is put it directly into your parentheses. So you've got 1 kilogram over 2.2 lbs. So our pounds cancel, but look, we're still left with kilograms. We still have to convert to grams. So what we're going to do now scoot this over a little bit. What we're going to do now is we are going to open another set of parentheses. Now, how do we convert grams or kilograms to grams? Well, we know that we have 1,000 grams per 1 kilogram, okay? Or we know that we have 1 kilogram per 1,000 grams, right? So remember, whatever goes on the bottom cancels out what's on the top. Now at this point, we have kilograms on the top. So we're going to take kilograms and put it on the bottom. Now this one has kilograms on the bottom, so we're just going to take that and plug it directly in. So all you have to do is write um, 1,000 grams over 1 kilogram. Our kilograms cancel and we are left with our grams. So now what you have to do is you multiply it across the top and you multiply across the bottom. So now what we have is we have 1.79 LBS, or I'm sorry, at this point the units have disappeared for that. So 1.79 times 1 times 1,000 and that 1,000 still has its grams because the grams did not cancel. And we're going to divide that by 2.2 times 1. And this actually, in theory, this little one would be times it as well. So now we just do the math and get our answer. Just multiply the top, multiply the bottom, divide, and we're done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to erase all this, and we're going to do another problem, this time with density. So... Let's get started.
So the important thing to remember with density is that density is just mass divided by volume. So remember, density is mass over volume. Okay? So the way that we usually write this is we usually write this as, say, the density of lead, which is abbreviated PV, is 11.3 grams per cubic centimeter. Okay? All a cubic, cubic centimeter is is a measure of volume. You've got a cube. We're saying if you had one cube of lead, this is how much it would weigh. Okay? So... When we have this in a problem, we might see an example such as you have a um, 32 centimeter cube uh, block of lead. And what we want to know is how many grams. Okay? So when we write our density, it's important to remember that we can write our density as a fraction. It is 11.3 grams over 1 centimeter cubed. When we're writing it like this, we usually just don't bother to put that 1 in there because when you divide by 1, what happens? Absolutely nothing. So what we need to do is we need to take this and convert it to this so that we can use it in our dimensional analysis. So now we know that we have our 32 grams per centimeter cubed. That, or 32 centimeters cubed, my apologies. That is going to be our known this time. So we take our known, or our given, and we put it on our left. So we've got 32 centimeters cubed. Okay? So now what's important to remember with density is that it's just a ratio. Like our 1,000 meters, to, or 1,000 meters to 1 kilometer or 60 seconds to one minute. It's the same thing. All it's saying is that you have 11.3 grams per one centimeter cubed. So we could actually write this as one centimeter cubed per 11.3 grams. So now, remember, we're going to need to convert this by having whatever's on the top go onto the bottom here, okay? When we set this up, it's the same thing as saying 32 centimeters cubed over 1. So our centimeters cubed are going to be on the top, which means they now need to go on the bottom. Of these two ratios, the first one has centimeters cubed already on the bottom. So all we have to do is plug it in directly. So we have 11.3 grams over 1 centimeter cubed. So all you have to do is cancel out your centimeters cubed, hit equals, you put times across the top, times across the bottom, so you have 32 times 11.3 grams, and that's divided by 1 times 1. All you have to do is do the math, and you're good to go. It's as simple as that. So let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to email me or to contact me on ManageBack and hopefully you will do well on the test.